Nine days before Christmas, a guard, the recruit and a soldier were shot dead in County Leitrim during the rescue of Don Tidy. Their deaths have caused everyone to think again about the question of arms and the Gaudi. At the weekend, the Taoiseach said a higher proportion of the force might have to carry weapons, and this whole area is understood to have been discussed at last Thursday's meeting between the Commissioner and his Chief Superintendents. The Garda Representative Association, too, has given the matter some thought. I think the change that we may seek is greater protection from armed personnel, preferably from uh, the armed section of the force itself, be it the Special Branch or, or the uh, Task Force people. Uh, at roadblocks and checkpoints and at places where uh, members of the force may encounter armed criminals or travelling uh, terrorists or whatever. Mr Marinin says his association still supports the policy that uniformed Gaudi should be unarmed. However, he's unhappy with the present weapons training given to plainclothes men. Are the rules for the training of people who carry the uh, automatic weapons are good if they are applied. Unfortunately, uh, I think that the training doesn't accord to the extent originally envisaged. And uh, in so far as training for ordinary members of the force who may occasionally, while out of uniform, be required to carry a shot arm, a pistol, uh, that training is quite scant. Part of the reason for this is that the Gaudi don't have a firing range of their own in the Dublin area and have to use the army range of the Curra. The force has just bought the former Talbot plant in North Dublin and there are plans to turn part of it into a firearms range. So that problem at least should be solved. However, there's more to using weapons than just firing at a static target. And it's in this area that the Garda Sergeants and Inspectors Association sees a need for a reassessment. We would see a need for a cool appraisal of the whole situation at this stage and training should be developed uh, more on a more tactical nature such as uh, simulated action training for uh, operational units of this kind based on what uh, is uh, in force in some other countries in this regard. Does that mean that at the moment the guards wouldn't have the same amount of arms training as perhaps the police forces in some other countries? Well, our view would be that uh, there is room for improvement in this uh, area, but as I said, a cool appraisal of the whole thing must be carried out and uh, we will see uh, what uh, changes should be made and we'll be making proposals and are in fact making proposals in that regard. Plain clothes men usually carry one of two types of handguns, the 38 calibre Smith & Wesson or the 9mm Walther pistol. The Uzi machine gun is also carried, but it's come in for some criticism. Bill Scott's an Irishman who served with a number of armed police forces and he feels the Uzi isn't at all suitable. The rate of fire of that weapon is somewhere between 600 and 700 rounds a minute. Now, nobody would dare use that, not in our society anyway, other than a lunatic. So what, in, uh, what earthly use is it in doing police work at the moment in this country anyway? Well, we have uh, carried out an evaluation of various firearms that might be used by uh, police and um, after a, a lot of consideration of the thing, we have decided that the, the Uzi is about uh, as, as good a weapon as can be found. In, uh, uh, the difficulty about uh, using an Uzi well, it would be, of course, uh, should it be used in, in crowded situations and that type of thing. Uh, generally speaking, it is not used in those situations and is used in generally one-to-one -one situations or where um, uh, criminals are confronted in emergency situations. Well, the, it, it, is a, it is a weapon for a purpose. I am told that it is perhaps the best uh, close-range uh, weapon available. Now, it, it has, of course, like every other weapon, it has deficiencies. It isn't uh, suitable in every situation. Uh, it, it might be that we would require a medium or a long-range weapon to supplement it. However, no matter what type of gun is used, its very presence means mistakes can be made. In 1980, for example, an innocent man was wounded by Gaudi at Merrion Road in Dublin during a gun battle with a group of pub raiders. The force is aware of these dangers, but it also knows that on occasions Gaudi will be faced with determined and heavily armed men. So that's the dilemma facing the commissioner and one he'll have to try to solve over the coming months. At the moment, the general consensus is that the force should still remain unarmed, but that uh, 
uh, a very cool appraisal should be taken of the whole scene and that uh, a consideration should be given as to whether more special units should carry arms on particular occasions. Well, obviously, a, section, a certain section is the answer, and these men will have to be specially selected, they'll have to be specially trained, and not only that, they will have to be brought back and given regular refresher courses in the use of arms. Otherwise, innocent people are going to die. We would prefer, should conditions allow it, to be an unarmed police service. There are few unarmed police services left in the world at the moment. I believe there may only be three, and we are one. And... Uh, the conditions obtaining here make it increasingly difficult for us to remain such an unarmed police service, but it is the expectation of my association that we shall so remain. Uh, that may mean that more members of the Garda Shikana may have to carry arms on special occasions. It may mean the extension maybe even of task forces. Uh, it may mean uh, that we have to uh, get assistance from the army uh, on more occasions probably. Uh, but um, I think that so far at least uh, we would wish to remain broadly unarmed and that that means that uniformed members of the force shall not carry guns in the ordinary course of their